well, well. Long time no see. Around two years ago, I left to our local corner store to get myself a pack of cigarettes. Oh, and also to get married on the way. And I've been gone ever since. And it feels like it has been forever. If you have been following me on Instagram, you are more than up to date on all the bullshit that has been going on in my life. And if you're not and you really want to know, well, it's never too late to follow me. So follow me on Instagram, I guess. That's how you know where I am and if I'm still alive or if I'm leaving YouTube again. Who knows? Maybe I'm gonna go get another pack of cigarettes. Maybe I'll go get married again. Fuck knows. As a comeback, I'm basically starting brand new with my channel. Since I have been gone for quite a while, I do feel like I have missed a lot and things have changed on the internet so i'm going to start fresh i'm going to start new but the content is not going to be that much different that i can promise you because the amount of russian crap on russian tv and ukrainian tv holy shit you're in for such a fucking ride just wait for it you're going to regret every moment you spent on this channel you're going to regret it in a good way. In the past several years, Russian television was blessed by the gods with the most amazingly trashy reality TV shows. I do not know how many drugs you need to be on to come up with this shit, but holy crap, is it worth watching. It's really worth watching, trust me. Let me first say that I am far Far from a relationship expert, I am not an expert, I am not a psychologist, I have never studied psychology in my life, and everything I say is simply my opinion and a lot of very bad, not funny jokes. Okay? Okay. Let me first explain the gist of the show. The show is called A Little Bit Divorced, and its main target participants as such are couples on the brink of divorce. The couples get a chance at a brand new life with brand new partners as closely matching their version of perfection as possible. So basically what the producers of the show are saying is, here you go, brand new single for you, I promise you it's to help your relationship, it's gonna definitely fix your relationship, now kiss. Kiss. <laughs> As you can imagine, there's drama, there's cheating, there's jealousy, there's fighting, there's all kinds of amazingly trashy reality TV crap. And it's all here on the internet for us to enjoy. Let's all remember that these people have signed up for this themselves. They are well aware there's a person or even two with a camera and equipment right in front of them filming everything that they do. And they are well aware that all of that footage is going to end up not only on TV, but the internet. They are absolutely well aware of that, okay? So let's remember that when we watch it, that nobody's forcing these people to do that. And they are doing that because they want to, okay? I don't know why. But let's just remember that they are there because they wanted to be there on this TV show. I am not too sure how fake this show is because reality TV is mostly always fake. But from what I could find, the people in this show are actually real people. Yes, the situations that are being put in are obviously set up by the show. They would never be in that situation if it wasn't for the show. But they're real people. They're showing themselves as they really are, well, as they want to be seen on TV, at least. And it's not characters that were made up by somebody who sat down and made up a character on a script. These are real people with real social media pages and real Instagrams. Absolutely real. And it's fucking insane how real some of these people are. Holy fucking hell, some of these people. It is also very common for people in Russia to take part in such reality TV shows because the channel actually pays you for the time that you take off filming this show. So a lot of people do that not just to get themselves publicity and to show themselves on TV, they also get paid, so why the fuck not, okay? I thought we should start with the very first episode of the very first season of this very unique reality TV show. Yes, there's more than one season. Buckle up! You're in for a ride. In order to avoid copyright issues from the channel that actually owns this show, I'm going to watch this show with you in a reaction format as such, and only the best bits. I will try to explain almost everything that's going on, even though, trust me, most of it you do not want to hear, you do not want to know, it's so boring, but some of it... 
so good. Also, these episodes are at least an hour, an hour and a half long, so obviously I will be cutting a lot of things out of there. If you want to see the full episode, why would you want to do that? Fuck knows, but the link is always going to be below in the description. So let's get into it and start off with our first couple. Alena, who is 32, and Alexander, who is 43 years old. And they have been married for six years. And what they claim is the main problem in their relationship is that they live with a childish individual. Which, in some way, is true, and you're going to see why. Either way, we're not here to dig into other people's marital problems. We're here to see people being stupid. It just so happens that sometimes those align. Да, 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 сейчас все будет. Держи. Что тебе перепадет? Может, тебе целый кусок дать? Ну, дай, конечно. Ее любовь, да, которую мог бы получать я, получает собака. Мне ничего не, нет, не достается. Я немножко, скажем так, неуютно себя чувствую в следующем после собаки. Потому что, скажем так, мне на завтрак может забыть приготовить собаку, она накормит это всегда. Мне обидно. It's a fucking dog. A dog so small, it can barely jump up to reach the counter in the first place where the food is, okay? That dog cannot take care of itself. It cannot wake up in the morning and pour itself some dry food into a bowl and have a nice meal. No, it's the responsibility of the owner, who I assume is your wife. I assume that's your wife's dog, right? It's her responsibility to feed the dog, and that's what she's doing. And the dog is actually begging for the food, okay? It's not like the dog is sitting there and expecting the food to come. No, the dog is running under her legs and begging for it. You can do the same if that's the problem. Sit on the floor and whine like a little dog and you might get a piece of cheese and a piece of ham as well. If that's your biggest marital problem, that your wife doesn't feed you because you're not asking her to feed you. I am pretty sure if you just ask your wife to make you a nice sandwich, she will because us women, we like to take care of men. Okay? Well, at least I do, okay? A woman like me that likes to take care of her man, she would get up and make her, her man a sandwich if he asks for it. I'm not going to go make you a sandwich all day long, 24-7, sandwich after sandwich after sandwich, because I know, first of all, you're gonna be full eventually, and second, you're not asking me for so many sandwiches. Just ask. Ask your wife for food. I'm sure she will give it to you. It's not that fucking hard, okay? It's not that hard. You're 43 years old. You can handle it. I'm sure you can. On this weird show, the couples also decide how they're going to tackle cheating while participating on the show, because obviously they're going to live with other partners, so something might happen, right? In most cases, the couples, both of them, are strictly against any kind of cheating and they're only going to communicate with another person and see what kind of things they can fix in their own relationship. Same as in this case, Alexander said he is strictly against any kind of cheating, he is very strictly against it. Alena, on the other hand, she was like, Nah, I can look into it. I mean, if somebody cheated on me, it must have been something problematic in our relationship, right? I will just look into it and I will fix it. I mean... Good for her, I guess. Not much I can say. The couples also get to decide if one of them should stay at home and host their new partner as such in their own home, or if both of them should go and visit their new partners in their places. Fucking hell, this show is so fucking weird. But either way, in most cases, the couple says like, no, we do not want any strangers, any new men or new women in our home where we live together, where we sleep together, we're going to visit them in their homes. And that's mostly the case, thank God, because I honestly do not understand how anybody will allow any kind of other men or women into their home while they were not there. Like, that's crazy for me. Completely crazy. <laughs> So the couple are off to meet their new partners for the next couple of days, complete strangers that they have never met before in their lives. And the first one to meet his new wife as such is Alexander. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. Можно? Uh, да. 
Светлана Подстригаева, 29 лет. По образованию экономист. Работает дизайнером. В 23 года заработала свой первый брокерский миллион. 11 лет встречалась с мужчиной, который на ней так и не женился. Светлана мечтает о любви. Общаясь с женатым мужчиной, она хочет понять, как ей строить свои отношения, чтобы выйти замуж. Я была сильной. Спасибо. Больше не хочу. I just have to say that Svetlana over here is the only, only sane person in this whole episode. And she probably regrets joining this madhouse of a show so much, so much. I bet you that she has never taken part in another reality TV show ever since. I bet you. She is never going to make that mistake ever again. I would also like to note that even though she's a strong, independent woman, she also wants a man in her life. So many women do. And if you want a man in your life, go for it! Don't fucking listen to what feminists are telling you. Don't listen to what they're saying that you can be strong and happy by yourself if you want a man. Go get yourself a man. You deserve it. Same goes for you gay men. Go get yourself a strong man. You all deserve it. I mean, maybe you deserve it. I don't know you personally, but... I hope you deserve it. Alena also met her new partner, Mark, a divorcee in his 40s, and honestly, discussing their personal details and all this information about them, extremely unnecessary, extremely boring, so I'm just going to stick to these terms from now on. Husband, wife, new husband, new wife. All you have to remember is that there's a couple, there's a husband and a wife, and for the time being, for the show, they get a new husband and a new wife. This show is so fucking weird. This show is so boring, it's so full of chit-chats and romance and dates and just people talking about themselves. So, like I've said, I'm picking the juiciest, best bits for you, starting off the husband telling his new wife about his bucket list. Did you in Japan? In Japan, no. Where was I? You know, I have in life, let's say, that every person has to do something. Да, я в свое время сделал себе жизненный план. То есть у тебя есть доска визуализации, да? Ну, фактически, да, есть жизненный план. То есть что я должен совершить в этой жизни, да? Я давно не, не произносил это, да? Плюнуть с самого высокого здания в мире. Угу. Отломить кусочек от э, самого древнего здания в мире. Пнуть ногой в самую древнюю спортивную арену. Ну и помочиться на самый большой забор. Два из них я уже выполнил. Очень вовремя. Ты ведь это не серьезно. Абсолютно серьезно. Это вообще как? I absolutely love her interview reactions after everything has happened and he has left and she can just express herself and she's just sitting there so confused at how how can these be the dreams and lifelong wishes of a man in his 40s? In his 40s. How? <laughs> to urinate on the biggest fence in the world. This sounds like something my dog might be dreaming of, but even his dreams include some tasty treats instead of just urinating on stuff. Because, you know, priorities. The new wife was shocked, to say the least. She did not understand how can these be the dreams of a grown ass man in his 40s. So she asked him, how? How can these be your dreams? You're a grown-ass man in your 40s. And he explained that he made those up when he was a kid. And he just kept those dreams since he was a kid. Because these are absolutely adequate dreams to have when you're in your 40s. Absolutely normal. This isn't the only unique thing about our husband here. He likes being unique in a lot of ways. Александр решил сразить незнакомку не только количеством подарков, но и оригинальностью. О, да, это очень экстравагантный подарок. Он тебе тоже надолго запомнится. Я хочу, чтобы ты это все примерила. Ты чем руководствовался, когда на это покупал? Ну, как минимум, это самый неординарный подарок в моей жизни. Я не понимаю, почему это? Я предположил, что... В твоей жизни были уже ситуации, да, типовые, стандартные, и очень тяжело сделать что-то необычное. Букет цветов – это банально. Мне нравится быть необычным. Can you guess what the gift was? Can you? I know you can, you bunch of weirdos. I'm gonna give you three seconds to guess. It sucks. 
He gave her socks. Капроновые носки это это мощно. Это мощно, это сильно, это спасибо. Но я не я не знаю, куда это носить. Как это будет огонь. смотреться на твоей ноге? Не, Саш, на туфли ты попал, конечно. Нет, в шоке это приличное слово для данного мероприятия. Нет, завтра ты идешь покупать не туфли. Это лечится? И почему хотя бы не чулки? The man has a foot fetish. So he got a stranger that he has never met before in his life. Cute little socks. I mean, to each their own, to each their own. I cannot at all comment on people's fetishes, but maybe, just maybe, keep it between you and your actual wife? Just a thought. Just, just a thought, okay? So the new wife set up a place for the husband on the living room sofa, while the new husband was trying to make sure the wife is feeling comfortable at his place. Let me remind you, this is the first evening that he's meeting this still married woman. Уверен, что тебе сегодня ни с кем не хочется? Нет, сегодня точно мне не хочется. Был очень насыщенный день. Хорошо, но тем не менее нам надо переспать с этими мыслями, с этими впечатлениями, которые мы сегодня получили. Ты мне ужасно понравилась, ты очень симпатичная, красивая девушка. Я тебя покидаю вовсе не потому, что Ну все, за сим я тебя покидаю. Спасибо, да. Всего доброго. Let me explain something that I have observed while watching this show. The participants on this show, mainly the single participants, can be divided into several groups. Some people, like Svetlana, go on this show in order to aid themselves in their own relationships in their own lives, because they want to see the type of problems that other people who have already been in their relationship for quite a while have in their life. And in my opinion, that's probably the most adequate way to take part in this madness that they call a reality TV show. And then there's other people, like the new husband in this episode, who literally went on this show just to meet a woman that's about to get divorced with her husband. Because it's an easy target, and she's already experienced, and why the fuck not break up a relationship and steal yourself a woman? She is already on the brink of divorce without you participating in it, so why the fuck not try and seduce her? This is the type of logic that these people use, like, oh, they're married? Well, they're almost not married. Might as well. The same goes for all the married participants on the show. Some of them go so they can improve something in their own lives and see what they can change in order to make their own lives happier. And some people literally go just to find themselves a replacement. Because why the fuck not? The storyline for the wife and her new husband is extremely boring. He took her out shopping, he took her out to eat, they've done all the typical date stuff. And I am not going to bore you with that. Don't worry. The husband, however, he likes being unique, as you can remember. So he's doing unique things with his new wife. He's a gamer, so he took his new wife to a virtual reality club, where Svetlana tried video gaming for the very first time in her life. Здравствуйте. Добро пожаловать в наш клуб. Проходим вот наш зал виртуальной реальности. У вас был опыт или первый раз? Артём. Я вообще ненавижу компьютерные игры. Я не играю в них никогда. Ну, берем руками. Смотри, как он грязненький, или он поцарапанный. Нет, он не грязный. Это полоски специально. Давайте я помогу одеть, а? Да не, 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 все в порядке. Я вообще не в порядке. Я же тоже могу тебе помочь. И отпускаем, все, отпускаем руки. Смотри, передвижение здесь происходит, вот маленькая кнопочка, видишь, ты можешь указывать, куда ты встанешь. То есть вот нажимаешь и отпускаешь. Mm -hmm. Смотри, давай создадим с тобой игру. Давай. Выбирай давай. компанию. Давай. Да. Sunshine. Так, многопользовательский. Okay. Создать. Создать. Да. So the guy is doing his job, right? His job is to show clients how the VR works, not only so they don't break their expensive equipment, but also so people can enjoy themselves and actually play a game and not just try to figure out how the thing works for a whole hour. And I know, I understand, he was probably enjoying his work quite a lot that day. Quite. Can't blame him. But the 43-year-old married man did not like sharing the attention. The attention of a single woman who is not even his wife. No, he was not happy with that arrangement 
at all. Ты это сейчас серьезно? Да никакой шутки. Я, ты же говоришь, что я говорю, как было. Это было. Все это время ты общалась с, с ведущим. Мы сюда вдвоем же пришли вместе поиграть, правильно? Я общалась с ведущим, потому что я не понимала, как работать с этими кнопками. Я не был в игре, я спокойненько стоял рядом. Мы с тобой так клево вза вза взаимодействовали, ты с ведущим. Я отдельно постоял, постарял, посмотрел ушку. Класс, мы здорово провели время. Вот по факту. Будь здорово. I am not too sure what to say here, really. I'm a bit lost for words. I guess I could say that I would expect that behavior from a four-year-old, not from a 43-year-old. So the husband kept surprising his new wife. For example, he tried to apologize for his behavior by making them both dinner. And then, during dinner, he says this. Ты сколько раз была замужем? Ни разу. О, и, и ты знаешь, если ты продолжишь в таком виде и так же разговаривать, и так же себя вести... Как? Понимаешь, ты красивая, симпатичная женщина, а внутри ты мужик. Понимаешь, кто захочет взять в жены мужика? Хороший мужик. Ну, в женском теле. Когда тебе нечем парировать, ты начинаешь оскорблять. Ну, это твоя ты очень агрессивен, зрения. вот правда. Я? Ну, ты Я очень на тебя даже не нападал. Ты не понимаешь, что не только тебя могут бесить люди. Ты тоже можешь бесить людей. Hey, that's transphobic. She can identify and be on the inside whatever she wants to be. But honestly, imagine being a growing ass man and getting so offended by something a beautiful female tells you that you're gonna call her a man on the inside. I have no words. Just look at her. She's already absolutely done with his bullshit. She wants out of the show, but she's way too polite to just come up to the crew and be like, get this fucking psycho out of my house now. I don't want him anywhere near me. Unfortunately, she was too polite to say that, so we get to see more trash. Meanwhile, the new husband got them a hotel room, got her a bunch of gifts, and made his way into the bed sheets of the wife. Yep, she cheated on her husband on the show, in front of a bunch of cameras, with no shame whatsoever. Just, just keep that in mind, okay? That by now, by the third day on the show, she was already in bed with another man, who is not her husband. You're thinking maybe she finally made the choice, maybe she made the choice to have a proper adult man in her life. Well, let's wait and see, okay? Let's wait and see, the show is not over yet. We are going to focus on what the husband is up to. So after having another fight with his new wife over ignoring her, he decides to take her to a restaurant as an apology. Why was he ignoring her, you're asking? Well, because two days after going to the VR club, he's still upset about her ignoring him at the VR club. Two days after it happened. Very unique guy that man is. So during this dinner at a restaurant, the wife decided to voice her opinions about the relationship the husband has with his wife and how he doesn't really have long-term plans for them and how he plays way too many computer games. And this happened. Сашунь, ты не думала, что если ты ее любишь и причиняешь очень много вреда, отпусти. Ну тогда я, собственно говоря. Ты уходишь? Нет, почему? Когда любишь, ты готов сделать все ради этого человека. И, собственно говоря, что я, собственно говоря, сейчас и сделаю. Ибо я люблю Алену. Ты что, дурак, что ли? Ты в своем уме? Я хотел Светлану поставить на место, да, показать, что она не бог, не царь, что она не может с ним командовать и к ней можно относиться не так, как она привыкла, да. Мне хочется задать только один вопрос, как ей умудряется с ним жить. И вообще хочется обратиться ко всем женщинам и сказать, женщины, не терпите таких мужчин никогда. And here I have to absolutely agree with her, 100%. And it goes both ways. Nobody, not a man, not a woman, should tolerate such childish and horrific behavior from anyone in their life. I mean, I might tolerate such behavior from a four-year-old if it was my son or my daughter, but when you turn five or six, you better start behaving right or you're going to that naughty corner right away. I honestly feel so, so sorry for Svetlana for having to deal with this asshole and for him making her cry this way. I really hate that he made her cry because she deserves 
so much better. I honestly feel for so many people on this TV show. Feel sorry for them, that is, because taking part in this madhouse of a TV show. Holy shit, one TV show, so many regrets. So, so many regrets. Just one TV show. The next bit of the show is part of the show's rules. It's also the most fascinating bit of the show because the couples get to meet each other on a double date. But oh no, the new husband, whom the wife has been having a fantastic time with, suddenly has very, very urgent work-related issues he has to attend to. То есть они придут вдвоем, у них все замечательно, а я что, ты мне бросаешь? Нет, я не бросаю, я тебя... Да все, не надо даже трогать меня. Не надо ничего говорить, вот реально. Ты уже все сказал. Все сказал и все сделал. Вот, выход там. No need to touch me? I really do not think that's what she was screaming the previous night in bed with him. So even though Svetlana had a salad thrown at her and she probably wanted nothing to do with that couple whatsoever anymore, she still showed up on the double date which was very, very short. Just, just watch. And that was the date. What a surprise! These two honestly deserve each other. They even use the same tactics of throwing food at people. They should just stick together, use condoms, and please never, ever, ever reproduce. Ever. All it took for the wife is to see another female individual next to her husband and she immediately forgets all about being in bed with a different man the night before. Completely forgets that it happened. And I promise you, the slow motion, the black and white one that you saw there, that was not me. That is exactly how they aired it on TV. I did not edit anything in there. Those people, I'm telling you, they made this TV show just to get people to cheat on each other and to start fights because this is the perfect combination for a reality TV show in Russia. It's perfection. It is perfect. So the husband and the wife leave together from the restaurant acting like everything is fixed and their relationship just got healed and the show actually helped them and now they're so in love and they're so happy. While well, Svetlana was left in the restaurant to rethink all of the life choices that have led her to that moment in time. Poor, poor, poor Svetlana. I honestly feel so bad for her and I hope that she has forgotten all about taking part in that show because holy shit, that must have been a fun week for her. Very fun. Oh, and the new husband that the wife technically had an affair with? He probably never saw her again. Who knows? So that was the very first episode of this very, very unique Russian reality TV show. And this is a test run as such because trust me, out of all the couples, this couple was probably the least interesting. Trust me, you're in for such characters. You would think that somebody on acid made those people up, but nope. Real people in Russia. Real people. Trust me, you're in for such a ride. You're going to ask for a refund at the end of it, I'm pretty sure of that. <laughs> there are some truly unique and fascinating individuals on this show. Some of them literally made me scream my head off at the screen because it was crazy, it was insane. You will be screaming with me eventually, I promise you that. So please, do let me know what you thought of this show, do let me know if you would like me to make more videos about this reality TV show because my decision will be directly impacted by your response to this video. If you enjoyed this, I will be much much quicker at making the next video. I cannot wait to show you the craziness that's yet to come. 
I can't wait. Thank you so, so much for watching. As a little thank you for sticking around and waiting for me to get my life together, I'm going to do a little Q&A video, so all of the questions that you have for me, personal, not too personal, I will try to answer them. Just leave them in the comments below in this format. I hope that fitting in the screen. Either way, leave your questions below. I will do a Q&A video where I'll answer all the questions as best as I can. Thank you again so much for watching and I can't wait to see you again. Bye!